name is Michelle, and in this video, I'm going to provide you with a brief introduction to Stateflow. So, what is Stateflow? Stateflow is an environment for modeling and simulating logic based on state machines. Stateflow itself works within Simulink, inside of a Simulink model. It conveniently models your system, which can be represented graphically or as a table, and determines how it reacts to events, time-based conditions, and external input signals. So what exactly is a state? A state is an operating mode of a reactive system. Essentially, it is a stable condition of the system. So for example, a light has two states, off or on. I also mentioned state machines. What are those? Well, a state machine is a model of a system that can be in one of a set number of states, where the state that it is currently in depends on its previous state and variables. So to understand this, let's go back to our example of a light. We know that a light has only two steady states, off or on. Imagine that a light is on. When you flip the switch, the light turns off because its previous state was on and the switch was flipped, causing the transition from on to off. Stateflow is a very convenient tool because it makes it easy to make a set of decisions or actions based on the last visited state because information about the state is persistent. This is typically much more challenging to program in traditional textual programming languages, motivating us to use Stateflow. So let's understand the typical steps that you will go through when using Stateflow to model a reactive system. The first step is to define the system, which includes defining the state information as well as the default or initial state, defining the variables to both the input to and output from the Stateflow model, and defining the transitions or how to go from one state to another. The next step is then to create the Stateflow representation, which you can do using a graphic or various table formats. Next, create the Simulink model, which will provide input to and take input from the Stateflow editor. Finally, run and analyze the model. Now that we've seen these general steps, let's go through a simple example and then expand that example into a more real-world application. So for the first simple example, let's go back to the light that we previously mentioned. So the first step is to define the states, which we have already mentioned, are on and off. And let's say that the default state is off. Next, we must define our variables. So the input variable is the switch position, and the output variable is the state of the light. Finally, let's define the transitions. In our case, we only have one transition, which is the switch being flipped. We are now ready to create a stateflow model for this light. As I mentioned, Stateflow works within Simulink, so from the MATLAB desktop, open Simulink, and then double-click on Blank Model to create a new blank Simulink model. From your Simulink window, open the Library Browser. In the left panel of your Simulink Library Browser, if you scroll down, you will find the Stateflow Library. In here, you will find blocks for the various tables and charts that you can use to create a Stateflow model. For our example, we will use a chart, so let's click on this block, drag and drop it using our left mouse button into the Simulink model, just like any other Simulink block. And we can go ahead and rename this block to Light System. Now when you double click on this chart block, it will open the Stateflow editor, and within here we will create the Stateflow model for our light. The first step is to add blocks for each of the states. In the left panel, you will notice various objects that you can drag and drop into the Stateflow model. Let's go ahead and drop one of these state blocks into our model. A question mark that's highlighted appears, and in here you can write the name of the state. So let's call this state off. You will also notice that the first state block that you drop into this model has an arrow pointing to it with a filled in circle at one end. This is a default transition arrow, and essentially it points to your default or initial state. Next, we have to add a block for the on state. You could go back to the left panel, or just like Simulink, you can right click on this block, drag, and create a duplicate. And in fact, Stateflow already renamed this one to on for us. Also, just like Simulink, you will notice that there's blue guiding lines that appear when you have multiple blocks to help you align everything. And additionally, just like Simulink, if you hit the spacebar on your keyboard, you will automatically zoom into the viewable window. Next, let's create the transitions between these two states. If you go to the edge of the off state, a crosshair will appear, and then using your left mouse button, you can click and drag to draw an arrow from the off state to the on state, and this will create a transition arrow. A cursor appears on top of this transition arrow, and you can write the code for either its condition for this transition or the execution or assignment statement that should occur along this transition. 
So if we're going from off to on, let's say we have some variable called switch position, such that when switch position is 0, the light is off, and when it's 1, the light is on. So in order for this transition to occur, switch position should equal 1. Let's review what this means. If you're in the off state, and the variable switch position becomes 1, you will follow this transition arrow and enter the on state. Now you will notice that when I clicked away from the cursor above this transition arrow, Stateflow automatically took care of the syntax of adding the square brackets for me. Additionally, just like in Simulink, if you use your left mouse button, you can drag this block of text and you can drag state blocks as well and the transitions stay connected. We can also add a transition the other way from on to off. If switch position changes to zero, the light should turn off. Next, let's consider what happens when you transition into one of these two states. Say that the light is off and then you flip the switch so that it's in position one and you transition into the on state. Well, some variable should change so that we can output it to Simulink and see that the light state has changed. So if you click into the on state block, you can type the command light state equals one with a semicolon at the end. And then when you click away from the block, you will notice that Stateflow added the syntax entry colon. Essentially what this is saying is that upon entry into this state, execute the command light state equals one. And you can go ahead and move the command to the next line to make it easier to read. Similarly, once we enter the off state, we can say that light state should get set to zero. Now we've created the state flow model for our light, but how do we actually get the input of switch position and give the output of light state? To do this, you need to go to the view menu and click on symbols, and this will open the symbol browser. In here, you will notice that switch position and light state are already in the list, although they have an error next to them that says undefined symbol. To define them, click on this icon under type and select what type of data this is. In our case, switch position is input data and light state is output data. You can read documentation for these various other types to see when they would be appropriate for use. Now we can go ahead and close the symbol browser. And if we go back to our Simulink model, which we can do by going to the address bar and clicking on the Simulink icon and expand this block, you will see that there is now an input port for switch position and an output port for light state. Next, let's figure out how to give the input of the switch position to the state flow system. So if you go back to your library browser and under the Simulink library go to the dashboard, you will notice a rocker switch. A rocker switch can control a constant block, which we can connect directly to the switch position input port. Let's go ahead and double click on the rocker switch and select the constant block and connect it to the switch. Essentially, what this is going to do is that if you're in the top or on position, the value of the constant will be one. And if you're in the bottom or off position, the value of the constant will be zero. And since this properly corresponds to what we've defined inside of our state flow model, we can click apply and select okay. How do we see the output of our light state? Well, to do that, let's go ahead and use a display block and connect that to the light state port. And in addition, let's also use a lamp from the dashboard sub library, which we can double click to connect to the display block. And in here, we will say that if the light state is zero or what we said was off, we will set the light to be white. And if the light state is one or what we said is on, we will set the light to be orange. We are now ready to run this simulation. So let's go ahead and save our model as state flow light example. And then before we run the simulation, let's change the time to infinite and then click on the green run button. Right away, you will notice that the light is off or white and the switch is in the off position. However, if we flip the rocker switch to on, the light will turn on as expected and again off and on. So this is having the expected behavior. Additionally, you can analyze your system by using the state flow animation. To do this, first let's open the state flow editor. We can right click on the chart block and open the state flow editor in a new window. Currently, the rocker switch is in the off position, the lamp is off, and in our state flow editor, there's a highlighting line around the off state block while we're running the simulation. Then if you hit the switch and toggle to the on position, the lamp turns on and this highlight actually goes to the on state block. As you may have guessed, this highlight corresponds to the state that you're currently in. Additionally, in the state flow editor, if you go to the simulation menu, state flow animation, and select slow, 
and then toggle the switch, you will actually see the full animation going from one state into a transition line and to the next state. This stateful animation is a very useful analysis tool. Now notice that you're currently in the on state, and if you hit the rocker switch and hit the on position again, there's no transition made and you remain in the on state because the input did not change. Now that we've seen the simple light example, let's stop our simulation and expand this example into something with a little more complexity. So for our next example, let's say that we've created a robot and on it we have an LED light which we want to help indicate the battery power. So on this robot, the LED light should be green if the power is on and the battery level is high. It should turn off if the power is off. And if the power is on but the battery is low, it should be red for three seconds before turning off to help conserve battery power. So the states will now include on and off as before, and in addition we have a third state for the low battery mode, which is when we have less than 10% battery power. Our variables will include for inputs the switch position as well as the battery level, the output will still be the light state, and the transitions will include the flip of the switch as before, as well as the battery level crossing the 10% threshold, and three seconds after entering low battery mode, we want to transition to the off state. We can expand the model that we just created for the simple light into this new example. Let's begin by updating our state flowchart. We'll create a third state block for this low battery mode, and let's say that when you enter the low battery mode, we set the light state variable equal to two. Now, how do we actually enter low battery mode? Well, if your light is on, but your battery power drops below 10%, you should go into low battery mode. So we can say that the variable battery level is less than 10 along this transition. You'll notice that now the on state block has two transition arrows coming out of it, and Stateflow has automatically labeled these one and two in the order in which we added them. These numbers correspond to the execution order or the order in which Stateflow will check these transitions. So first it will go along this transition line and see if this condition is true, and if it is, it will transition from the on state to the off state. If not, then it will go to the transition arrow labeled 2 and check this condition. You can change the execution order by right clicking on a transition and going to the execution order menu. And we said that once we're in low battery mode, we want to transition to the off state after 3 seconds in order to conserve power. How do you wait for 3 seconds? Well, you can use the state flow term after and give an input of 3 seconds and this will cause a delay of three seconds before this transition occurs. There is one other update that I want to make to the state flow chart. This will not change the functionality, but it will make it easier to read as well as introduce a very commonly used object. In the left panel under the state block, there is a junction object. Let's drag and drop one of these into our model. A junction is a representation of different possible transition paths for a single transition. So for example, this low battery state has a single transition, which we can take and connect to this junction. Coming out of this junction, you could have multiple different transition paths. Now in our case, we know we want to go straight from the low battery mode to the off state. However, if we had other transition paths, they could come out of this same junction, and in that case, all of them would be delayed for three seconds. For symmetry, let me go ahead and add another junction on the other side of this low battery block. You will see that this also makes all of our lines straight and makes the model easier to read. Now that we've updated the state flow chart, let's go ahead and update our symbols to include battery level as input data. Then when you go back to the Simulink model, you will note that there's a second input port for battery level. Let's create another constant block to connect to this battery level port. So the first constant block represents the power switch for the robot, and the second one represents the battery power. So let's connect the battery power constant block to a slider from the dashboard sublibrary. We can double click on the slider and connect it to the constant block. And because this is representing battery percentage, zero to 100 or the default minimum and maximum are applicable. Next, we have to update our lamp. Previously, we had that if the light state was zero, it was white. And if the light state was one, it was orange. We now have a third light state of two, which is low battery mode, so we'll set that to red. And we'll change the light state of one to green because that means the battery level is good and your power is on. We are now almost ready to begin our simulation. Like before, I've opened the state flow chart in a new window. Let's make sure that our rocker switch is in the off position and that our battery level is at 100%. 
Then let's hit the play button to begin our simulation. You will notice that the light is off, the rocker switch is in the off position, and in the state flow chart, the highlight is on the off state. Let's go ahead and turn the light on. As expected, we transition into the on state. Now let's change the battery level, but keep it above 10%. As expected, we're staying in the on state and the light is green. Now let's see if we transition into low battery mode if we change the battery level to be less than 10%. As expected, we enter low battery mode. However, it seems that after we enter low battery mode and transition after three seconds into the off state, we're transitioning again into the on state. Why is this happening? Well, we can take a look at the state flow animation to see. It seems we're following the transition from the switch position equaling one. So we must have to add another condition along with the switch position being one to ensure that we don't transition to the on state. So let's stop our simulation and go ahead and add a second term and say that battery level has to be greater than or equal to 10. Then let's go ahead and run our simulation again. And we're still in less than 10% battery power, but the switch is on. However, our state is now off and we stay off. Another very convenient aspect of the state flow animation is that while you're running your simulation, if you hover over a state block, you can see the variables used by that block and their current values. And similarly, if you hover over a transition, you can see the values of the variables in that transition. So now we can see that the battery level is in fact less than 10, and that is why this transition is not occurring. And now that we added that battery level condition, you will see that our entire model is acting as expected. And thus we have completed our example of a robot LED battery light using Stateflow. For more examples on how to use Stateflow, in the Help menu under Stateflow, select Examples. That brings us to the end of the Intro to Stateflow video. For more information on Stateflow and the topics introduced here, please visit the following links.